Davis, 11-year NFL veteran with the Cardinals, Vikings, and Rams, and current CBS Sports analyst who will call BYU and USF in Tampa. Corey, welcome to BYU Sports Nation. Thanks a lot for having me, fellas. I appreciate y'all having me on. You got it. Specifically, why are you anticipating and excited to watch this version of BYU football against USF on Saturday? Well, I think it's two teams that uh, are still uh, in the process of completely finding their identities. And I think, you know, you, you had a little bit of a faster start for the season, obviously, for, for BYU. And the last game that they had was a pretty tough game, but it went you know back and forth. The game where they had a 14 to three lead, and then I thought USF began to like put his season in uh, maybe a restart mode a week ago against UConn, uh, simply because they were able to establish the running game, and that's something that I think, uh, in a sense, has been uh, inconsistent defending uh, for BYU. So those factors. Uh, along with uh, a number of key special teams, I think players on both teams uh, could make for an exciting game. You've touched on it a little bit there, but how would you evaluate BYU's season so far? They come in at 2-3, and three, they lose the opener to Utah, and then they have two exciting overtime wins over Tennessee and USC, and then back-to-back -back losses. How would you evaluate the season as a whole for the Cougars? Well, I think if you um, really just take out certain parts, for example, uh, let's say you take out maybe a quarter or two in the Utah game uh, where it kind of got away from them with some turnovers. If you take out uh, maybe the, the, the early portion of Tennessee when it comes to defending the run, and, and I guess they kind of stayed true maybe throughout, but I thought they defended the run late in that game uh, with a certain vigor that you would need. Uh, the Washington game got away from them. I think Toledo... Uh, again, was able to establish some stuff on the ground late. Uh, I think they played tough throughout. They just had a couple of quarters that they like to have back. For USF, it's a little bit of a different story. Now, they haven't, I felt like, maybe played um, up to their talent level at times, I, I guess is a good way to put it. Uh, inconsistency in terms of making a decision at quarterback. Are you going to go ahead and go with McLeod or – uh, when he struggles a bit, will you go back to Barnett? Uh, so their offensive line has to get better. I actually think BYU has an advantage from a defensive line perspective against their offensive line. They need to dominate their offensive line in this game, uh, led by uh, I think one guy that can have a big impact is Kyra Tonga. And if he does, uh, then he can stop some of the ground success they had a week ago. Corey, you know what it means to play on a stout defense. So having seen BYU and watched some film, what change would you make on the defensive line so that they can stop the run, which they have not really been able to do to this point? Well, I think it's going to come down to what fronts you use. I mean, they, they've, they've done some even fronts, and what I mean by that is they'll have, you know, both their defensive tackles over the guards, and then you have, your defensive ends occasionally in six or five techniques or basically six techniques when they're in the, the two techniques inside. But aside from getting too technical, I think continuing to mix up the front, I believe that a big part of it is going to come down to the linebackers believing their keys. Uh, I, I know Fanua has made some plays in terms of a lot of tackles. Uh, when you see him shoot gaps like he did, uh, you know, it, 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 at times a week ago, um, or even in the overtime against Tennessee, you see him shoot a gap. He's got to believe his eyes a little bit more. He's a big key. They've got to be stouter on the edge against outside runs. So your outside linebackers, if you're going to have some, and whether I'm talking about P, um, P. Lee, I mean, he's a, a, the defensive end, but he's got to play a little bit stouter. Uh, I think you're going to need, uh, you know, Wilger to play with, you know, added force. I've seen him stack and shed effectively at his height. Uh, so, you know, I, I believe those guys are, are very important. Um, I think um, Leia Tuao is really a, another player, uh, Uriah, number 58, uh, who's been pretty effective on the edge as well. Um, and, and Leia Tua really has to um, have one of his better games uh, to me this weekend as well going against some tackles that I think he can have success against. 
Jaron Hall will be making his first start as BYU's quarterback, taking over for the injured Zach Wilson. What are your expectations for Jaron Hall as he makes his first start? I think it's going to be exciting. I, I think, uh, you know, you, I think that I saw them try to get him involved a little bit, you know, coming in even as a receiver against Tennessee, uh, just with a fake slot sweep, but just trying to get him on the field. I think that lays credence to, you know, his overall ability. I think it's just watching them from in his high school days. He has good range as a passer. You know, he can create on the move. Uh, you know, I, I like the fact that, being able to throw down the field is something that they can maintain for what they were able to do with, with Zach Wilson at quarterback. I, I still think he's going to be a guy that can push the ball down the field, and I think he needs to challenge uh, the South Florida defensive backs uh, to continue to open up some uh, run lanes, I think, uh, for their running backs. And, and I actually like uh, both of the running backs that BYU has, particularly um, – and get Katoa involved in the screen game. Corey Chavis, 11-year NFL veteran with us on BYU Sports Nation, getting prepared to call the BYU-USF game in Tampa this Saturday on CBS Sports Network. Corey, when you look at the unpredictability of sports, it's, it's kind of what makes it beautiful. And so when you look at this game specifically, are you anticipating a shootout or more of a defensive struggle with the uh, BYU rolling out a new quarterback and USF having their own quarterback quandary. What what type of game are you anticipating? Well, I do anticipate some turnovers. Uh, I believe that that's one of the big things that USF has been pretty efficient at. They've been efficient in terms of forcing turnovers. A lot of times when you see a team with a 2-3 and three record that struggles, you lose track of maybe what they're doing defensively. But they forced eight fumbles this year and they've actually recovered eight fumbles. Uh, that along with the fact that they've been able to get their hands on a lot of footballs, uh, they're an active defense. So I think that's the reason why attacking them down the field is something you want to do early in the game so they'll back off because I think they mix up their fronts a lot. I think on the other side for BYU, they're also a team that's forced some fumbles as well uh, defensively, but, uh, and they've also you know, picked some passes off. Uh, but I think in terms of what they can do to maybe confuse McLeod, uh, you saw that a little bit in some of his games, like against SMU. Uh, I think they do a very good job of disguising on the back end. You really don't know whether what coverage they're playing at times, depending on how they rotate their safety. So I could see some turnovers getting created, kind of like SMU did with mixing up the fronts, as we talked about earlier, and also mixing up your safeties. And a lot of those guys have experience, whether you're talking about Tanner, Powell, or Lee. All of those guys have some experience. It'll be important for McLeod uh, to really understand where IU is at on the field, his location. Otherwise, they might, you know, force him into some mistakes as well. What's the matchup, Corey, you think this game ultimately boils down to? Is that defensive line, offensive line matchup you talked about earlier, is that where you think this game boils down to? I think both offensive lines against the other team's defensive line is going to be extremely important. Uh, I think the one thing that I've seen from USF's defensive line, they do a lot of slanting and spiking. They do a lot of amoeba fronts. And what I mean by that is they'll have three down linemen and then they'll have the linebackers up around the line of scrimmage moving around, trying to make you guess a little bit in terms of where you're going to have to fit even if you're running into some type of zone scheme and you're not doing a man-run blocking scheme. So that's important for BYU's offensive line. On the other side, I believe that it's just going to be about brute power. And that's why I mentioned Tonga earlier. Uh, Fawatea is another guy that's quick inside. Um, I think Daw can have a bigger game. Uh, I like his potential because of his length on the edge. Uh, Nowigwe has to come in and do some damage as well. Uh, another guy that they rotate in, Mahe, um, he's been active at times. Those guys have to dominate inside against Atterbury, Harris, and Cecil. They've got to win those inside matchups, force some of these runs to bounce, and I think that's when BYU's linebackers and safeties have to step up and fill the alleys. CBS Sports Analyst Corey Chavis on BYU Sports Nation. You have a keen eye for NFL talent. So on both sides of this matchup, who are the guys that have NFL potential, real NFL potential, in your opinion? 
both tight ends, Mitchell Wilcox uh, for USF and also Matt Bushman uh, for BYU. Uh, I think those guys are legitimate NFL talents. Don't be surprised to see a guy like he's get into a camp. I've really been impressed with Micah Simon's development. Uh, he's playing faster, uh, kind of back to his 2017 form. Uh, I think he's somebody to kind of keep an eye on. Uh, I, I like Kirk Livingstone, the defensive end slash defensive tackle for USF. Uh, and then defensively, uh, Gavaloku is really a player that can play all over the place. I like him as a gunner on special teams. He's very active there. He's also played a little bit of safety at two interceptions a couple of years back against Mississippi State. He's put up a nice resume. He'll tackle. Uh, so I, I like him quite a bit. Um, and, you know, really, Kyrus Tonga may be the best pro prospect in the game or one of the better ones. A strong, uh, he's a guy that can defeat trap blocks. He's powerful, 320 pounds. He moves pretty well. Uh, he's a legitimate guy. And I think he's got to continue to take his game to the next level. He doesn't always, you know, not always show up with stats with him, uh, but he's a tough guy to block. And, you know, he could play on the other side of the line of scrimmage just with his six inch punch because he's so powerful in the upper body and more mobile than 320 pounds, you'd think. Corey, with your knowledge, I'm convinced you don't do anything but watch football 24 hours a day, seven days <laughs> a week. No, 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 man. I, I try to have some type of life, but I love it. You know, and I, I, you know, I've always uh, – I really think that um, these two football teams, they do have a lot of talent. So, you know, I get a little bit excited, man, especially when it's almost game time. Uh, it's nothing like – the preparation for a game, I think, uh, you know, it's meticulous and, and you get to watch all these different players and, and really look at the coaches and, and how their confidence varies during games. You know, I, I, as a player, you always knew how confident your coach was by what he was calling, either offensively or defensively. And so the coach's demeanor during the games, I don't need to look at the expressions on their faces. I can just kind of go by their calls and that'll let you know how they're feeling about the game. Corey Chavis, a proud alumnus of Silver Bluff High School, and don't you forget it, Corey. It's great to talk to you, man. Thanks a lot, man. I really appreciate y'all having me on, man. You got it. We'll see you in Tampa. Corey Chavis on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. He is. 